Hello, this is Sim Racing Corner and my full review for the Logitech G923 True Force Force Feedback Wheel and Pedal Set. Before we dive in, just a few quick words. Previously to publishing this review, I have put out a series of other videos on the G923. There's a full unboxing video, another where we go into depth about True Force. Also, my G29 versus G923 deep dive comparison video. And finally, there's a quick guide on how to use the new dual clutch feature. If this is your first visit to my channel, I would recommend you watch those videos as well for your research, as you will find additional information in those, since for this review, some of those subjects are condensed to make this a more concise presentation. So links in the description can be found for those videos. So let's get started. The G923 is the fourth generation of the Logitech G series of force feedback wheels. It all began with the very successful G25 back in 2007, followed by the G27 in 2010, and then the G29 and G920 in 2015. And five years on, in 2020, we have the G923. I have the Xbox version of the G923 here, and PlayStation console owners have a version of the G923 for themselves. Also, both console versions of the G923 are fully Windows PC compatible. As we take a look around the wheelbase, I can tell you contained within this sleek hard plastic shell housing are two motors connected to the steering column that provide the force feedback resistance. Onboard electronics process the telemetry sent from the driving game and this is converted to the force feedback felt through the wheel. The power output of the motors peaks at around 2.1 newton meters of torque. This is according to Logitech. This is in line with previous Logitech G series wheels which share the same dual motor configuration. Underneath there is a cavity where you'll find sockets for plugging in the pedals, the power socket and for the optional extra driving force GT shifter. Also, we have a handy cable tidy for storing any excess cable. There's two M6 screw holes for hard mounting this to a drilled wheel plate on a wheel stand or cockpit setup. The integrated table clamps are made from strengthened glass filled nylon. The jaws of the clamps open up to 3.5cm. They do a good job at keeping the wheelbase in place. The wheel rim has a width diameter of 28cm and slightly shorter at 26.5cm top to bottom due to the D-shaped design. The wheel is wrapped in wheel stitched leather. The front plate has an arrangement of 11 labelled buttons plus a D-pad top left and a rotary dial in the bottom right. On console these controls are predefined to a console gamepad for convenience. On PC, some games will pre-map these too, but can be changed in the game control settings. Finally, sitting above the centre, we have a set of LED lights, which aren't doing much right now, but on the racetrack, they become useful gear shift rev lights, so look out for these during the driving tests later in the video. The G923 has 900 degrees of rotation. That means two and a half turns of the wheel from end to end. Moving to the rear of the wheel, there are two paddles for shifting through the gears. These are made from stainless steel, painted black. They are well proportioned and easy to reach. That completes the tour of the wheelbase. Up next, the pedals. The G923 pedal set is complete with throttle, brake and clutch controls. They plug directly into the wheelbase via the 240cm cable. Underneath, eight small rubber pads provide grip for hard floors, but they will not be sufficient to keep the pedals from moving forward in use. You will need to prop the pedals up against something solid to keep them in place. Better still, the M6 screw holes offer a secure hard mounting option. For carpets, the flip out grip bar is completely effective at holding the pedals stationary. The pedals use springs for resistance and for returning the pedals to their neutral position. The throttle and clutch use standard linear springs, the clutch being slightly stronger than the throttle. The brake pedal has a much stronger progressive spring. As the brake pedal is pushed, the compressed spring resistance increases over the course of the movement. This helps you modulate your braking with greater consistency. 
as you learn to use the brake, you'll work out how much pressure against that spring resistance is required to apply the right amount of braking force without locking the wheels. And the final component, the included power supply unit. Nothing remarkable to see here, but it is part of the package, so I should show it to you even if it's just briefly. That segment is complete, so on to testing in a variety of titles. I'm not a console gamer, so it's just PC driving games in this review. Um, if you do drop a question about a particular game and console compatibility, sorry, I do not have the knowledge, but you can still ask and maybe someone else will pick it up. But before you can use the G923 on your PC, you will need to install the latest Logitech G-Hub software. It's named Hub for a good reason, as this software is used by other Logitech hardware products, such as webcams, keyboards, and mice as well. For our wheel, the G-Hub menu presents us with some very easy to understand options. You can reassign buttons and also create specific profiles for different games. Um, on the whole, you'll leave this alone as you'll map buttons in the game anyway. The steering rotation can be changed here. Most games will automatically set the correct steering rotation for the different cars you drop into, but having the option here offers a manual backup just in case. You can test the pedals here to see if they're working correctly and adjust the sensitivity. The defaults are good to go. Generally speaking, it's better to make these adjustments directly in the game. So on the whole, it's not likely you'll need to visit the G-Hub software much, if at all, um, but it does need to be installed as it does have the drivers required for the G923 to be recognized by your PC and work in your games. As for compatibility, I had no problems getting the G923 to work with all the titles I tested. For example, this is Automobilista. It's a game from a few years back and it's working just fine. There's no G923 preset profile to rely on, so it's just a case of manually mapping the wheel axis, pedals, paddle shifters and the wheel buttons in the game menu. It only takes a couple of minutes and you do it only once, so it's not really a big deal. Project Cars 2 next, a title that remains popular today and working as expected, but it is worth mentioning the rev lights are not working. What I understand from this, the driving game will need a specific G923 profile for the rev lights to work, um, which means that's for the developer to add and unlikely with older titles that are no longer getting updates. This is Grid from 2019 and Codemasters have added G923 support and you can see the rev lights are illuminating. Now let's talk about the force feedback. This is something that has improved over the last generation Logitech wheels. Although the G923 shares the same motors as the previous generation of G series Logitech wheels, so it's not more powerful technically in any way, but Logitech have updated a couple of related components. Firstly, they've beefed up the connection between the motors and the steering column. That's something Logitech have stated. Looking at these images though, um, they look about the same to me, so let's assume it's a minor refresh and maybe more of an, of an exaggerated Logitech PR bullet point rather than a major change that's happened here. The second update is the onboard circuit board has a more powerful processor for delivering the force feedback effects. And this is something that I do believe has changed things up. The force feedback is not stronger than my G29, but the wheel rotation is much smoother and agile in operation than the G29. The G923 has no additional and unnecessary motor friction adding resistance as I turn the wheel. Um, this enables the force feedback effects to come through more cleanly and detailed. My guess is the G923 is processing the force feedback effects slightly differently, basically better than before. And in my opinion, a nice improvement over the G29. In rally titles especially, I can rotate the wheel quickly and I'm getting all the right force feedback information without any heaviness that would otherwise make rotating the wheel feel sluggish. I do like the way the force feedback is coming through, it's a tangible improvement over my G29. I cover this difference extensively in my G923 versus G29 deep dive comparison video. 
So if you want more details on this, do check out that video. If I have one criticism about the G923 force feedback, and this carries over from my G29 review, it would be I would have liked Logitech to have installed more powerful motors so I can feel more punchy force feedback effects, especially when the tires load up during cornering and where a strong feel of counter force resistance should give you a good sense of tire grip. That's something where the Logitech motors are limited due to their moderate strength. And this lends to a vague feeling of corner and grip. This is something I'm particularly sensitive to as my regular sim setup is based on a powerful direct drive motor system that provides high fidelity and stronger force feedback effects without any compromises. On the whole, I am happy with the force feedback. The G923 is delivering what it needs to do through those effects so I know how the vehicle is reacting to the steering inputs and also getting a sensation of curbs and bumps and all those other good things. Force feedback is more than merely adding immersion. Force feedback is a driving aid for the user to understand the motion of the car and connection with the road surface. It's a two-way interaction. Your inputs will affect the output and strength of the effects passed from the wheel. And in turn, the driver reacts to those sensations, which should help you stay planted on the track and off the grass. And the result is the G923 ticks the right boxes. It is not the strongest force feedback or the most detailed. Um, it is restricted by the power of the motors, but it is the best force feedback from any Logitech wheel I've ever used. And that is a good thing. The G923 has squeezed out more performance out of the Logitech platform. Staying on the subject of force feedback, Logitech wheels have a reputation for producing rattling noises and I recorded this in Cartcraft. This game is a more extreme example of the rattle as those small tyres and the bumpy ride is coming through the force feedback with a lot of detail so the rattle is very vibrant, more so than other driving games where it's more subtle and much you know, less of it. Um, I know some people are put off by the Logitech wheel rattle, I'm not particularly bothered by it or distracted by it, um, the game sound usually drowns out that noise so yeah. It is there and is noisier than other wheels out there, but you know, it is what it is. True Force is the biggest innovation that comes to the new Logitech wheel, and I will remind you again, I have published a very detailed video on True Force, so make sure you watch that as this will be a more concise rendition for this review. Essentially, True Force is a tactile vibration effect that layers on top of the regular force feedback. So it doesn't replace the force feedback, it's in addition to the force feedback. The motors oscillate rapidly, producing tiny vibrations, adding to the force feedback as a whole for a fuller, richer, more detailed volume of effect. Running over curbs or any bumpy surface, even engine noise, um, collisions, stuff like that. True Force adds texture to the force feedback, which otherwise isn't there when it's not being used. It's very impressive and clever stuff. You instantly know when True Force is being used and miss it when it's not present. True Force is really great, but unfortunately, there is a catch, and that is True Force only works in titles that have True Force support added. So, what does that mean to you and me? Well, the game developer has to add this into the game for an update, and this is a sticking point to be fair. True Force is a proprietary Logitech technology, it's completely exclusive to the G923. So, are game developers tripping over themselves to add True Force support? Well, that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. I'm making this video more than two months after the launch of the G923, and there are a total of four driving games with True Force support. 
This is a feature Logitech have really pushed as a big deal as part of the G923 launch to set it apart from the competition and rightly so it is that good. However without implementation from developers it is completely redundant. I think time will tell on this. Um, I have to, you have to give it a bit of a chance I suppose to uh, bed in. Um, so it could be too early to know at this point. Give it a year and if developers take it on board or ignore adding true force to their games during this time I think we'll have a fair answer. But I certainly hope to see more titles getting True Force because it is pretty awesome and yeah, it does get the most out of the G923 when it's being used. Another new addition to the G923 is the dual clutch to aid you getting off the start line quickly without skidding the tyres. With a dual clutch system, you would expect to have an extra set of analog paddles on the back of the wheel next to your paddle shifters. Um, well, as you can see, we don't have those. So Logitech have managed an alternative method for this to work, and work it does. The way you operate the dual clutch is using the foot clutch in conjunction with either the LSB or RSB buttons on the front of the wheel that you choose during the setup process. First, you manually adjust the biting point of the clutch foot pedal by fully pressing the clutch pedal first, and then using the plus and minus buttons to adjust the clutch biting point. Then for full clutch engagement, you need to hold down the thumb button on the wheel as well as the clutch foot pedal. When you are ready to release the car with first gear engaged, also while feathering the throttle, you lift the thumb button, which will immediately hit your clutch biting point, then a controlled release of the pedal and increasing the throttle input, and off you go. Sound complicated? Well, it's not really once you've worked it out and you can follow my separate dual clutch video guide which runs you through the entire procedure step by step. I'm using a SIM hub overlay so I have a visual guide to set the clutch biting point. So if the driving game does not have a HUD overlay to display pedal inputs, then you will be setting this blind which isn't straightforward at all. The dual clutch works. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a faff to set up and when you turn off the G923, the setting is lost. So you'll need to set it again the next time you're in the car. Yes, um, so I would say this is a bit of a half-hearted effort from Logitech on the dual clutch. It is a feature, um, but yeah, I imagine most people will not bother since it is a little bit hidden away and it is a little bit of a hassle to uh, set up. We'll stay on the subject of pedals and have a few words about the G923 pedal set. They are solid and comfortable pedals to use, identical to the G25 pedals from 2007. In fact, you can plug the G923 pedals into a G25 and they'll work just fine and vice versa. Um, with one difference, the brake pedal spring is completely new in the G923 pedals. That's something we covered earlier in the video. Um, it's a progressive spring. I find the tension pushing against the brake is a good balance of firmness. And I think most people will prefer this over the rubber bumper and spring assembly. That was a feature of the G29 and G920 pedals. I suspect this is the reason Logitech made this change after getting complaints after the overly stiff brake pedal of the older pedal set. The build quality of the G923 is up to the same standard of the previous generation wheel, since essentially what we have is a refresh of a wheel and pedal set that it's replacing. It looks virtually identical and materially, what, 99% of the same parts with some upgrades that we've already covered. Okay, well this is not a bad thing at all. Logitech wheels over the past 20 years maintain a reputation of reliability. It's a major selling point to owning a Logitech Force Feedback Wheel. These are not cheap to buy, so having this reassurance is good to know. And should you sell your G923 in the future, you will get a good chunk of your money back. It's amazing that even the old G25, over 10 years old, on the second-hand market, they are still sold for over £100 on eBay. This epic video has been pretty long, so we'll move on to the verdict and my final words. Having recently reviewed a Logitech G29 and then started using the G923 pretty much after that, um, there are a lot of similarities and some people may be disappointed that Logitech didn't do more with this opportunity, but there are definitely some good improvements and this is the best Logitech wheel they've made, it's the best Logitech wheel I've used, um, it is a positive. The way I see things, Logitech do not specialise in force feedback wheels 
and this is a single product of many different things they manufacture and with the Logitech G series of wheels they're sticking with a tried and tested product line. Um, it's popular and reliable and affordable and based on that the G923 is actually a good refresh of the platform. The launch price of the G923 may be a bit expensive for some but that price should drop at some point in the future and that's just based on historical trends of previous generation Logitech wheel prices which have seen big price cuts during their life. Particularly during traditional annual sales events that is the time to grab a Logitech wheel as they can be incredibly good value offering the best price to performance of any force feedback wheel you can buy. If Logitech plans to replace the G923 in five years time with another model, I really have no idea what they could possibly do to squeeze out more from this platform that they've been updating for the past 14 years uh, with each new model. I feel they've done as much as they can here um, and I am impressed what they've managed to do. Um, I really didn't expect the G923 to be much better than the G29 but it is in some real ways. Um, there's some good improvements that make the G923 a worthy replacement. I wouldn't go as far as to say if you have an older Logitech wheel you should immediately go out and buy one of these. If you're looking to upgrade the Thrustmaster T300 would be a more suitable step up in performance for my money but I do like the G923 so good job Logitech. And that concludes my review for the Logitech G923. I hope you found something useful here. Please drop your comments below the video. It's always good to know your thoughts as well. And we're done here. So thank you very much for watching as always. And thank you for subscribing. So until the next one, happy simming and bye bye.